going back to being a New Yorker. Yeah. Born in New York mm-hmm. City. Um, when did you envision yourself becoming a sports broadcaster? And yeah. perhaps maybe even at this level, calling Sunday Night Football yeah, games? Yeah, ne- never, never at this level. You know, you, okay. these you get lucky sometimes. You start to do things you didn't even dream about. And you wonder, like, how, how do you top this? What's next? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I grew up in New York, only child. Um, I have a family who loves sports. Sports was on all the time. And I always enjoyed the sportscasters. Like, I didn't want to be the next superstar player. I wanted to be a sportscaster as a mm-hmm. kid and just kind of grew up loving it, followed that passion. Marv Albert, Bob Costas, and uh, another announcer, Dick Stockton, were all Syracuse alums. Mm-hmm. And I found that out early on in the process. And I wanted to go to Syracuse and was lucky enough to go there. And uh, it was everything I dreamed of. And we've got so many people who've come before us, like I mentioned, or after I was there, I was there with Ian Eagle and Dave Pash, mm-hmm. who calls the Arizona Cardinals and does Major League uh, stuff. And I think we have five NFL radio voices who are Syracuse alums. So mm-hmm. we have individuals, women and men, everywhere in the business. Beth Mowens, who will go down as the glass ceiling breaker for yep. female play-by-play announcers. She wasn't the first, but she's done all the sports uh, in a way nobody has before. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, she went to her grad, grad year at Syracuse, and she's from the area. So I was around a lot of great people there, and that's how uh, a New York kid followed his sports casting dream. And I met my wife there who played basketball, and uh, that she's from Michigan. And so I, I, this is my state-in-law, and that's uh, how I ended up in Michigan. And we've been back here for almost a quarter century and love it. Oh, my gosh. So your wife, former D1 player. At yeah, she, she's the athlete of the family. I always like to say that uh, our kids, when they played sports, they, oh, your dad's an announcer. Like, my dad, <laughs> the worst athlete in the family. You know, in a family of four, I'm the fifth best. The dog slots in oh, okay. for me. So, uh, but yeah, so, so we, we have a family that loves sports. And mm-hmm. there's always a game on in the house somewhere. Somebody's watching a game or uh, somebody's talking about a game or a group chat with the family. Like, hey, did you see that? So. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a neat part of our lives. It's not just profession. It's passion for us as well. I get a lot of questions from college students all the time. What did you do at Michigan to put yourself yeah. in the position you are now? So what did you do at Syracuse mm-hmm. that you think helped prepare you the most to tackle the real world after graduation? Yeah, well, luckily we have a great college radio station there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called WAER Radio. It's been going since 1947. Ooh. And there's been a tradition of calling football and basketball games. So you get the great basketball. At my time, it was the Big East. Mm-hmm. Now it's the ACC. Yeah. Uh, lacrosse is a big sport is there there as well <clears throat> but also the market size the city was small enough that you got an opportunity to intern or work in the city yeah. and I had a chance to intern and that's how I got hired for my first job they had gone through two weekend sportscasters in about six weeks for a couple of different reasons and so they wanted to hire somebody young and cheap who was going to stay for a while and that was me and as I was ending my college career I got my tv career started so I always tell people prepare mm-hmm. Uh, and get yourself on the air as often as possible, even if that means talking into what used to be a tape recorder, what now is probably your phone. It's the phone, yes. Right. Just get yourself speaking out loud mm-hmm. because that's all we end up doing at some point, whether it's reading or talking. Uh, you get more comfortable with it. And then go back and be your own harshest critic. Mm-hmm. If, if you know what sounds good, then you can figure out a way to get yourself there. And I think that's a big part of it. And I'm sure you experienced your times on the air take away the nerves you forget cameras and microphones and you just kind of sit here and chat reps yes okay when you are your harshest critic and maybe this is years ago when you were just starting out but you Mm -hmm. knew you didn't have maybe your best game or or your best film on tape Uh how'd you talk yourself out of those moments to to just bring yourself back up and you know remind yourself that you can do this I I think on the way up it's hard because you're trying to be perfect I think Mm -hmm. after you've been lucky enough to establish a little bit of a, a background in the business uh, it doesn't beat you up personally as much, yeah. but I think you almost get more upset with yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll go back and watch every second of every Sunday night football game. I try to rewatch the game by noon the next day, wow. not not to hear myself talk. But when you're doing the game, you're working with your stat person, your spotter, your analyst, your producer, your director, sideline reporter. We're all working in concert. Everybody's doing their job. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's hard to see how the job came together for the viewer at home. Right. And while we may be talking about, oh, we could have said this, could have said that, what's the person at home? They're, they're sitting watching. Mm-hmm. So they don't want to be bombarded with every stat that we can give you on Jared Goff's passer rating against cover three in the third quarter on third down. Mm-hmm. We could get that, and it might be interesting, but at some point it's like too much, yeah. right? So – how does it come through the TV? The combination of the great pictures from the talented men and women who work the cameras, 
to the engineers, to the graphics folks, to the audio. Sometimes the best thing to say at the line of scrimmage is nothing. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll look ahead to a night, a night game in Green Bay in the winter. Usually a cold night, sound travels very well. Packer mm-hmm. fans are great about being quiet when the offense is on the field. Phenomenal. Aaron Rodgers is a really great, loud, strong cadence. Green 19, green yeah. 19. You can close your eyes. You, you've heard it a thousand times. So in Green Bay, I already will know hey, that's a game where when they get to the line of scrimmage, if it's not important, shut up. And yeah. that comes from going back and watching yourself and critiquing yourself. So that'll be that dance, and I'll probably go back on the following Monday after that game and go, man, I wish I wouldn't have said that at that point because there was good audio on the field. So mm-hmm. those are the things you try to do. And you beat yourself up yeah. because you want, you want to find the best. A perfect game, a perfect show mm-hmm. is out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the difference is your, your thought of what's perfect, my thought of what's perfect are two different things. Yes. So you got to find that sweet spot. I love it. The details, everything about it. I, I did look up kind of the timeline of when you graduated Syracuse, you mm-hmm. were sports interning for the local station in, right. in Cuse. It looked like you became sports director immediately after graduate graduation. I, I did, yeah. Which is insane, right? Um, it, it was cool. It was young. It was young. Yeah. I got I got to graduate college in the morning and do the six and eleven o'clock newscast that night. So <laughs> my my wait my no I, I wanted to shorten the timeline. That for, you know every school likes to go and say hey in forty five days most of our students get a degree. I figured if I could throw like eight hours in there it would shorten the average a little bit it would it was fun it was, it was a fun night <laughs> incredible and then you spent four years at that local station yeah. and then immediately the call to espn right yeah 25 years to the espn wow. after that which was a great experience and uh you know friendships that last a lifetime yep. there a lot of those folks like scott van pelt mm-hmm. uh kirk herbstreet chris fowler Susie culver uh they're all still really dear friends and on the game side uh all the analysts i work with like uh, hubie brown doing basketball mm-hmm. and all those folks they're still hubie and i spent many nights at the palace going to pistons games yep. and working pistons games uh, so th- they've all stayed friends it was a great 25 years i got a chance to cover golf cover all the championships in football and basketball as a studio reporter chance to do monday night football for a decade so it was uh, an amazing amazing time at the time that espn had really reached its height of being yeah. Not a cable sports network, but mm-hmm. a sports power. Yeah. And uh, to be there and to work with Chris Berman, Bob Lee, Robin Roberts, Charlie Steiner, Dan Patrick, Keith Oberman, Linda Cohn, Carl Ravitch, all the, Gary Miller, all those people, Craig Kilborn, Rich Eisen, Stuart Scott, God rest his soul. I mentioned Stuart, mm-hmm. uh, Susie, Scott. We were all there at the same time. Uh, so to work with uh, those people are legends in the business. Yeah. And to be with them was one of the great times uh, professionally that you could ever have. You mentioned all the championships you called. Is there a sporting event or championship high up on your list that you have somehow not called yet? <laughs> uh, when I went to NBC, the things I had not been a part of were the Indy 500, mm-hmm. the Kentucky Derby, and the Olympics. And I've been lucky enough to do all three of those the last few <laughs> years. So I, I guess the the one that's out there that I haven't been a part of uh, would be calling a Super Bowl. I have the chance to host the Super Bowl pregame now. So uh, that was great. And hopefully at some point you get that chance. But uh, the things I've gotten to cover and see, this job has taken me to you know, every continent other than Antarctica uh, <laughs> to, to cover sports. Uh, I've got a chance to host the World Cup final and the yeah. Super Bowl. You know, very few people have a chance to do that. Mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to host the Super Bowl and the Olympics in the same day. Um, you, you don't even think that these things are possible. So um, if we are able to check every other box, that's great. But if not, this has been such a good time and a good experience that um, mm-hmm. I'm very blessed to be a part of it. You've got to be a mentor to so many people. So who who's Mike Tirico's mentor? <laughs> um, it's been a lot of folks, a lot of folks behind the scenes, a lot of uh, management folks, producers mm-hmm. um, who people wouldn't know or recognize. It wasn't necessarily one sportscaster who kind of, looked after me but uh, anytime you asked uh, Sean McDonough for advice mm-hmm. Sean was about four years older than me anytime Jim Nance would come to Syracuse to cover basketball Big East basketball with Billy Packer Jim would take the time to talk to me Brent Musburger did the same thing so uh, along the way you'd ask for advice from those folks uh, but really that Syracuse family I was talking about mm-hmm. before we pr- kind of provide that next generation hand up um, relationship and a lot of those folks were the ones who were able to guide me through uh, but I've been lucky to work for many talented folks uh, behind the scenes uh, who people wouldn't know executives and producers who their voice will always be in the back of my mind hey it, 
are you asking this question? Are you doing this this way? Mm -hmm. And that's, as you know, being in front of a camera and a microphone uh, every day is you get better or you get worse. Yeah. And you try to find that, okay, did I get better? Did I do the right thing this time around? Mm -hmm. What is the best advice you've ever gotten? <sighs> Probably to listen. Mm -hmm. Because as talkers for a living, we are compensated and employed because of our verbal skill. Yeah. Well, you're always reminded that uh, our maker gave us one mouth and two ears, so we should listen twice as much as we speak. Uh, but we don't do that necessarily. It's not the nature of our job. Mm -hmm. uh, but being a great listener... Every time you ask a good question, often it comes from the answer that the person gave you before mm -hmm. that, right? So you just try to focus in on that. So listening is the best advice I've been given. I don't want to say I've taken that advice as much as I should, <laughs> but uh, I try to remind myself all the time, shut up and listen. Shut up and listen. I love that. Um, this is a very rare occurrence this season that you get to wake up in your house in Ann Arbor <laughs> and drive about 40 minutes here to the facility yeah. to watch um, the teams practice and, and do your coordinating meetings. Uh -huh. So I I just, I'm mad at the NFL for not keeping you top of mind <laughs> when it came to ske scheduling Sunday Night Football. Okay. But how cool is this experience knowing that you've lived in Michigan for 23 years and maybe the Lions could be your honorary couple, team? A couple, couple times, yeah. We, we, are, we are team agnostic. We, we don't root for anyone. We like to see, I always tell people, when the ball is in the air and the clock says zero, where it comes down determines who wins. Uh -huh. Then it's been a great week because we've had a great game and all the time you invested was really beneficial because yep. people are hanging on the edge of their seat for the end of that, mm -hmm. right? And it brings you the emotion of sports, which I think is what we all love so much. Mm -hmm. um, I, li I like to see the Lions play well for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Much like the Bengals, much like the Bills, and the Bills have had more success, though, but organizations that have these incredibly loyal fan bases but have not had that success on the field like New England has or Dallas has or some of the San Francisco during their heyday, mm -hmm. Green Bay the last 20, almost 30 years now. Um, you like to see these loyal fan bases rewarded because the energy in those stadiums is spectacular. I, I had the chance to call the Bengals playoff game against the Raiders last year and that was just wild yeah. there. And, you know, you can imagine what a playoff game in Ford Field would be like. Um, you just see that even in big regular season games. I, I have an appreciation for the fans because they are our customers. Mm -hmm. If we don't have fans <clears throat> listening to your podcast, watching your work, watching Sunday Night Football, we don't have jobs. Yeah. They're our customers. We don't get to interact with them the same way that most businesses get to interact with customers. Mm -hmm. But this is a chance for us to appreciate those folks and the loyal fans who work hard, take their hard-earned money and want to spend their entertainment being a part of an environment like you get at a big game. I have such respect for that, and I want to see those folks um, have their patience rewarded. Mm -hmm. And knowing so many Lions fans from over the years, from my father-in-law who you know, would tell me about Joe Schmidt and all the way through the different eras of watching Lions football here, I know what it would mean to the people involved. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, is more my soft spot for the success of this organization and wanting to see them do well. Uh, this is such a good city, and the city has come back in an amazing way, a way I never thought I'd see it, uh, if you asked me 10 or 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see that downtown vibrant and full on a Sunday, for like a Sunday night, let's say we get a Sunday night game here in the next couple of years, to see that energy in the city and to see Comerica lit up and Ford Field lit up and LCA lit up and downtown just kind of connected – shows Detroit to the world. Yeah. And for me, that would be wonderful to see. So am I rooting for the Lions in the game? Not necessarily. Am I rooting for the Lions overall? Absolutely. I want to see this place enjoy football. You just listened to another episode of Off the Record with Danny Rogers. A new episode drops every Tuesday.